Hey there Groovy Dudes and Dudettes, this is Stomper Be Thompin and in this video I'm going to give you a quick how to install of the Warn VRX 25S winch for these Yamaha Kodiak 450s. I'll also give a quick demonstration once I have it installed. But these fit all of the 2018 and newer Yamaha Kodiak 450s. This happens to be a 2020. Um, all of them are come pre-wired for a winch up at the front. but. Before I dive into the step-by-step the -step instructions, starting with uh, taking off some of the plastics real quick, uh, I just want to make a quick comment about this purchase. So I, I purchased mine through Rocky Mountain ATV. I've got no affiliation with them at all, but I just really like, uh, they're, they're, they have competitive prices and the shipping's always pretty reliable and the return policy's good. But most of all, I think that their, uh, their fitment guide is always spot on. So I knew purchasing this winch through Rocky Mountain, when it says it's going to fit my 2020 Kodiak 450, I know it's going to fit for sure. Uh, an additional comment is um, their website had two winches available. They had the Warn, which you could get with steel rope or synthetic. I went synthetic. I know there's pros and cons to each. Uh, that's just what I chose. But um, they've got the Warn winch and a 2500 and a 3500. Um, capacity. They just have two different motors, <clears throat> two different motors and sizes, but they both have 50 feet of line. So I went with the uh, the Warren winch because there was a Tusk winch available, and normally Tusk is Rocky Mountain's house in-house brand, and normally I trust everything Tusk made so far. Anything that has the Tusk name on it, I've been happy with so far. Uh, tires, protective components electronic components it's all been good for me however when i did dive into the rocky mountain reviews on the tusk winch that fits this bike um, it was a little bit of a mixed bag all of the four and five star reviews were from users who admitted that they hadn't used the winch yet or had only used it once and then all of the one to three star reviews were from people who had used the winch for about a full year. And so with that mixed bag of reviews, I just decided to go worn. I had a um, I had an off-brand winch on my older Forerunner, and I had that for seven years. It did plenty of pulls and it worked just as good the day I sold it as the day I installed it. So I'll show you what came in this package real quick. Of course, you've got the winch itself, this combo kit from Rocky Mountain comes with a mounting plate specific to your machine. One of the things I like most about this kit is that when you buy the worn winch with the synthetic line, you actually get a house fair lead instead of the rollers. So if you got a roller fair lead, your, your synthetic rope can get caught up in those, in like the corners of the rollers. I don't know. It's probably just fine, but I just prefer having a house fair lead with the synthetic rope. Um, additionally, it gives you all the wiring required to make it uh, to, to connect everything. You've got the contactor here with the color coded wiring and I'm looking for where did I drop it? This. This is something that does not come with the kit. So I'll, uh, I'll insert the part number. This is a Yamaha product. I'll insert the part number for this product at the bottom of the screen right now, but this is just a, a little lead terminal with these like, I don't know what you call those, the like bullet style connectors. Um, so this is what you can use uh, to connect the power source for the winch to the connector into your 12 volt system. So it, the, the winch is only accessible when the key's on. Otherwise, you will have to splice into a keyed-on power source like your 12-volt uh, your uh, cigarette lighter or something like that, or tap into some other 12-volt thing. So this was like 12, 13 bucks. I think I got it off like Partzilla. Again, see the part number at the bottom. But yep, first things first, gotta get these plastics off. Okay, first things, take the front rack off. It's four 12 meter bolts on top, and then there's two 10 millimeter bolts underneath to access through the bottom of the fender there. Okay, next pop off the seat, 
just pull it out and then to get this black plastic shroud off over top of the gas tank you just have two clips that you get with a flat tip screwdriver and then these two little bolts up front are five millimeter allen wrench once you've got that done and you've reinstalled your gas cap on top now's a good time to disconnect the negative terminal next up you can take off this top cover which is retained with just these clips two clips you'll have to pop out with screwdrivers up front but be careful that your 12 volt is connected so you'll have to disconnect that as you're removing it after that you can get these side panels and they just pull right up and out next we're going to take off this front bumper piece and that is four 12 millimeter bolts one here one up here and the same on the other side Another quick note, in order to get the front bumper off, I had to loosen up my Ricochet off-road skid plate. So I don't know what the stock setup's like, but you probably just want to remove those to begin with anyways. So I just had to loosen mine up a little bit. Okay, so here I'm going to show you the pre-wired setup that Yamaha gives you. So here's the wires in the front. Here they are now exposed. You've got your, your leads on there, red and black. They're just simply... I can't see it, but they were zip tied to the frame here. So you just cut that zip tie off, unwind them, take off their coverings that are held on by electrical tape. And there are your leads for the front, which you can just wind down in there. And then coming out of the rear, the terminals that hook up to your battery are back here as well. So here's the negative covered in its protective uh, plastic coating held on by electrical tape. And then here is your, oh, I'm sorry, this is your positive. Here's your negative they're zip tied here so just snip the zip and you can hook everything up when you're ready for that portion okay so in this orientation it is if I am standing at the back of the four-wheeler looking forward through it so here's how your minch your minch here's how your winch plates gonna mount to the bracket and to the ATV all these four holes line up perfectly see the four holes on the bottom of the winch this will well I'll weave it in here that will go like that the mounting hardware that is provided send all these up through these four holes I think these are 12 millimeter and then you also have another piece up here in front that's gonna help secure the mount to the front of this bash bar and here's a side angle view of how it should look when it's finally mounted up Notice you got the U bolt there and then the four bolts underneath. Do note though, this is the front of the ATV that your contact points for your uh, contactor are on the right hand side and your clutch release is over here on the left hand side. Okay, so for the last thing you got to mount on here, it's the house fair lead. It's an eight millimeter Allen bolt and a 17 millimeter lock nut that you just send through but check this out it's a little bit funny it mounts up high again you're looking at this head-on with the rope coming through here but the ropes coming off the bottom of the spool on my truck the rope was going in over the top which made more sense and also makes more sense with the alignment of this fair lead so not quite sure what's going on there I suppose you could flip it and just Reverse out is in and in is out or something, but I would prefer the rope coming off the top. But then again, I'm no winching expert, so let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, so the next thing you're going to have to do is figure out where you're going to mount your connector. There's not a lot of places to put it on this 450. A lot of people will put it right behind the winch near the rear diff, but I want to keep it up and out of the water if I can. Some people will mount it back here near the battery compartment underneath the seat. This would be probably an ideal spot, but I really don't want to lose the only luggage space on here. It would impact that just a little bit, but that's probably a really good spot for it right underneath your seat. <clears throat> but I determined I'm just going to mount it right up here next to this plastic fender. So that's where I'm going to put mine. It's going to be a tight fit, but everything will fit. I pushed the pre-mounted wires over from the uh, shift lever side over to this right hand side so that's how I'll connect it to the battery and I'll use the supplied 
yellow and blue wires to connect the connector to the winch. So right now that's what I'm going to do. I put on these little black boots and now it's time to wire these up and then I'll mount the winch to the machine. Okay, so the bumper has been reattached with the winch on it, of course. Everything's wired up, blue to blue, yellow to yellow. Make sure you put these little rubber boots on before you wire up any of these larger wires. And I have everything mounted to the connector up here too. Hard to see, but here's the black running from the, uh, the pre-wired black wire and the pre-wired red wire, and then our blue and yellow. And uh, of course your connector's all color coded. So last thing I'll have to do is mount up the switch and then hook everything up to the battery. All right, so I forgot to attach the little brown grounding wire on this uh, contactor, so I had to undo it and do that. And so I'll put that all back together, but then I did finally mount the switch. So you just mount it in whatever orientation you want. And here's where that little Yamaha product comes in handy. So I was able to plug this um, small lead that I got from Yamaha right into where the 12 volt hooks up. And it provides you these two extra contacts so you don't have to splice you just put your wire into either one of these both of them work for the uh, power source for the switch and then you just crimp down i put the wrong size shrink wrap on there so i'll just electrical tape this thing real good but uh, then you can when you do hook your 12 volt back up it can go right into this one so you maintain your 12 volt access and you have an additional uh, 12 volt source for like some heat grips or something like that. So I'm going to secure all this stuff and then it's basically put it back together. All right, and I almost forgot this part. The few things you got to put on the front end. Don't forget to slip on this protective sheath and then hook your front hook up. That's just a simple pin with a little cotter pin thing. And then I purchased this, but there's some other options you can use. Uh, this just kind of bolts over the front of the line. So when you suck the line in, it protects your fair lead. And here we are with the final install. Obviously I just have to put all the plastics back on, but the winch is mounted. I've got this rubber bump stop to protect the fair lead. Hooks attached, little pull wire. I highly recommend you double check that all your wiring is zip tied and secured and out of the way of your suspension and your axles and your radiator and that. Um, I'm still going to probably fine tune tidying up this a little bit with this excess wire, but the switch is mounted very nicely. Just got to tighten it down a little bit and everything works really well. Battery's really clean. The factory Yamaha wiring uh, was was the perfect length. Everything came in handy. So put your plastics back on and go winch some stuff. Next I'll show you a quick little demo. All right, and as promised, here's the demonstration of the winch in action. I'm just hooking it up to my Forerunner. Got a soft shackle at the recovery point. I'm gonna winch in in neutral. Uh, with the uh, the engine revving a bit so you can get a good idea of the speed. Here we go. Thanks for watching.